Well, hello again there, my healthy hapsters. I welcome you back, man, for another episode of the Mr. Healthy Habits Show. Can you believe that this is, I want to say, my 22nd or 23rd episode? Man, I cannot believe that I've gone that far with this, but I do thank you all for joining me here and for lending me your ears. So today, so today, man, we are going to continue our discussion on the Tao Te Ching and Lao Tzu and how to live in harmony with the universe. In our previous episode, we were discussing the topic of language and how language oftentimes occludes us from reality and what really exists in the situations that that come and go within our lives. We talked about how easy and difficult, hard and soft and beautiful and ugly and happiness and sadness are really all just concepts created in the mind. Concepts created in the mind that we've come accustomed to positing onto reality as our projection of our inner selves. Situations arise in our lives that we absorb, take into our brains, and then through the magic of science, come up with a response to what is going on. And that response is based off of our past experiences and influences. And we tend to want to describe what we see in reality to help us better process it. So when a situation arises, oftentimes we'll look at it and and determine this is going to be difficult. This is bad. This is good. This is beautiful. This is ugly. And it's really all just a projection based off what we've learned in our lives and what we've taken in. Whether or not a situation is difficult or easy is not a characteristic that that situation embodies in reality. It's very much a projection of our own inner selves onto it. Now, again, why is this important? This is important because now when I have a difficult task that arises in life that comes to me, I can look at this and say that it is not that it's difficult. That is just the workings of my inner brain coming up with a response and attempting to describe the situation. It's not a characteristic that this situation holds in reality. It may just be that it is perceived as difficult to me, but could be easy to someone else. I very well could look at the same situation and decide for myself that this is not difficult. This is easy. They're really just concepts created in the mind. All I'm doing is distorting reality, distorting what is really there and failing to accept harmony with what is. When you decide that something's good or something's bad, all you're doing is failing to live in harmony. You are inhibiting your ability to act spontaneously from the heart. Rather, you are conceptualizing and acting from the mind rather than spontaneous action from the heart. And now we will come back to this, but we're going to move on to another pervasive subject throughout the Tao Te Ching, and that is this concept of background and foreground and how we tend to look at things in a background foreground type of mentality. And that is another thing that occludes us from harmony with the universe and is a source of suffering and ill contentment towards the world. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about here right now. I just got into work. The drive was your normal, typical drive to work in the rain. It was full of traffic. It was full of bad drivers and this, that, and the other. But I need to remember that when I'm driving to work, I am part of a large causal process that's taking place. I am part of a river that is flowing in a direction. This isn't 
foreground and background. I need to be sure that I'm not s subtracting myself from this this river and and positing myself in the foreground now everything is happening in relation to me and i'm out of harmony i'm not just a particle in the river flowing to work i very much took myself from that river and and pulled myself into the foreground I've now given my situation and my circumstances more weight, more validity than they're warranted. Rather than living in harmony with the traffic and seeing myself as part of the flow, I now see the traffic as an obstacle, the traffic as the object, and me as the subject. And furthermore, now when I am cut off by a bad driver or somebody's going slow in front of me, I've essentially taken them out of the background, out of harmony, and have placed them also in the foreground. And now they are uh, another object that I've taken out of this river rather than just living in harmony with it all and accept accepting that that person, they are just part of the flow. They are just part of the flow to work. They are not an object that I can take from this and it into the foreground. All I do when I do that is reject harmony with what is. And I take that person and now I can describe them. I can describe them as being good or being bad or being wrong or being right. Rather than just accepting that they're just part of the day. They're just part of this grand flow of everyone leaving their homes and going to where they need to get to, just as I am. I'm part of that flow, and I don't need to subtract myself from it, give myself more validity than I deserve, put myself in the foreground, and decide that all these other things are just objects around me that are obstacles that I need to overcome rather than live in harmony with. You see, we are just part of a grand symphony. Reality is sort of in many ways like a symphony being played. And we are just a small part of that. The song started long before we got here and it's going to continue to go on long before we leave. The previous part of the song led to our part. A song is played as in one person following the other and one thing leads into the next. And that's very much what our life is like. The traffic did not happen as I arrived on the scene. That's not the way it works. That was there long before I was. And I simply joined with it and contributed to the flow in my own way as everybody else has. It's one large causal process that we are just a part of. You see, by abstracting things from harmony and placing them in the foreground, we deprecate the background and what is going on and give by doing so we give more validity to what we have decided that we are going to mentally put in the foreground these other bad drivers on the road they are not in the foreground other than in my mind that's the only place they exist in a foreground in reality they're just part of the same flow that i am it's when we do this and pull things into the foreground that all of a sudden now we start the conceptualization and we start to think and we start to try to describe the situation. And then naturally we go into this, this mode of where things are good and bad and happy and sad and beautiful and ugly. It's when we do this that we begin to project our own inner concerns and our own inner desires and attachments onto reality. And Taoism is largely about letting all of that go. It's when I let go of this want to pick things out of the road and describe them as good or bad or happy or sad. 
or dumb or smart. It's when I decide that I'm going to do this that I distort reality and more or less ruin what chance I have to just drive to work in the morning and do so peacefully and do so without my own concerns and desires and attachments. See, that's what we need to let go of. When we let go of those things, there is serenity, there is peace, there is contentment. There is just me driving to work through a sea of traffic that I am contributing to, that I am a part of. It's not personal. It's not this subject object mentality where oh, this person is dumb. They made a dumb move and now I have to see it as such and now I'm bothered. I don't have to be bothered by that. I could choose to just live in harmony with it. Let my concerns and my own attachments and desires to the situation go and just accept harmony with it. Accept that it's just part of the day. And we'll go deeper into this subject of living in harmony. Let's talk about when something breaks down. Would you, we're just going to use this as a general example, but this applies to life in many different instances in many different ways. But let's assume something breaks down and now, great, I've got to fix this thing. It happens all the time at my house, I'm telling you. I mean, it's just you you fix one thing and then two things break down, you know, but that's just life. But the point that I want to make here is we'll, we tend to look at the situation after we have fixed it and then say, yes, I've done this, I've fixed this. But this is just another example of background versus foreground. You see, again, when we say we've fixed something, we've accomplished this, I've completed the drive to work, I completed a task or whatnot, we, again, are just pulling ourselves from the background and positioning ourselves in the foreground, giving more validity to our own selves rather than living in harmony with the world and with reality. You see, it's important to remember that somebody had to teach me how to fix that, whether it was a YouTube video, whether it was my father, whether it was some blog or website, whether it was a collection of experiences that I've had within my life that I was able to draw upon to help me fix this thing. Somebody had to help me do that, maybe several people. And likewise, somebody had to help them learn how to do that so then that they could one day teach me. And eventually I'll teach my son, who will have his own problems, who will go about life and be able to fix those problems because of what I have taught him. So you can very well look back a generation and look at my own father, who can now say, well, Jesse was able to do that because I taught him. See, by me saying... I have done this. All I have done was deprecated the background, deprecated everything else that had contributed to me doing this. I'm, again, only part of the story. I'm just part of the process. It existed long before I did, and it's going to continue with my son long after I'm gone. Not only that, but whatever it was that broke down had to break down so that I can fix it. Without the item in question breaking down, I would never be able to fix it to begin with. And so would I be able to say that I have done this without the, the, the microwave failing or the blinds breaking or what have you? No, I really couldn't have. I was just part of the process, whatever it was, whether it was my kid breaking the blinds or wear and tear on the microwave that broke the microwave. I'm part of that story. I'm part of that process. I'm only a contribution to harmony and to reality. I'm not this foreground and everything happens around me. It's important to realize this. There is much peace in this because then once we understand this, then we know that things don't happen to us. Things aren't happening to us. I don't have to look at something breaking in the house and say, why did this happen to me? 
It's just part of the story. Things don't happen to us unless unless we abstract ourselves from harmony and posit ourselves in the foreground. Now things are happening in relation to me. And now we can fall into this mental trap where we go about a situation and look at it and say, things are happening to me. Woe is me. No, that's not the way it is. That's not the way it is. We are just part of a grand cosmic symphony here that has been going on long before us and will be going on long after us. It is not personal. And back to this subject of living in harmony here. Now, imagine if I fix something and then I say, yes, I fixed that. And then you have my father or someone in the background that taught me how to do that. Looking at me going on about how I fixed this when they taught me how to do so. I mean, you deprecate the background and fail in many ways to give them credit for what they have done. Imagine if that was you and you taught someone how to fix something and then next week that thing breaks and then they go about life and fix it and now they're like, oh yes, I've done this, I've fixed this. Well, there's going to be a thought in your mind of like, yeah, I taught you how to do that. So it's important. It's There's humility in this in this this analogy where we don't take credit for the things that that quote unquote we have accomplished we it, it, Taoism is this belief that we shouldn't take credit for the things that that we've accomplished because all we're doing is deprecating the background and the people and the, the circumstances and influences in our lives that have contributed to making us the person that we are that allows us to overcome these obstacles that we are just part of that just came into our life as the next bar in the song does. And let's go deeper into this subject of I have fixed this. We also tend to take possession of things in life. This is my desk. This is my table. These are my kids. This is my lunch. That is my car. I'll use a very personal example. This is my daughter. This is my daughter. In many ways, yes. And I practically can't even bring myself to believe otherwise. But she's also my wife's daughter. She's also my son's sister. Somewhere off in the near distant future, she's probably going to be someone's wife, someone's co-worker, someone's student, someone's teacher, someone's mother, someone's grandmother. To say that she is my daughter is to distort her. It's to distort her in what she truly is. She's so much more than just my daughter. That is just my attachment to her. That is how she is in relation to me. That is another example of background foreground. That is another example of me taking myself from harmony and putting myself in the foreground and doing the same thing with her, deprecating her to the point where she is just my daughter. She is so much more than that and will grow to be more than that. And it's important to realize that as I watch her grow into the person that she will one day become. You see, Yoda, teach yourself to let go of everything that you fear to lose. Now, I love my kids more than anything. Any parent could understand where I'm coming from when I say that. You love your kids more than life, more than anything. But Taoism largely centers around this belief that love things as if you wanted them to be free. That's a quote from Thich Nhat Hanh. Love things as if you wanted them to be free, as if you wanted to watch them grow and be free and experience life and be new things. Love my daughter as if I want her to be my son's sister, as if I want her to be my wife's daughter, as if I want her to one day be my grandkid's mother. 
love things as if you wanted them to be free, not as if you wanted to possess them and hold on to them with attachment and and desire and never let them go. She is part of my contribution to the world. And I want to see her grow and live and experience life. And now we are going to go further into a, another very important theme in Taoism from these lectures that have affected me in a very profound way. We are going to discuss how to live from the heart and not living from the mind. What is the difference, how we do this, and why is it important that we are mindful of when we are living from the mind versus when we are living from the heart? In fact, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. We are going to get to that topic in the next podcast, but I do thank you so much here for joining me. I really appreciate you guys, and as always, please subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast for future episodes, and uh, thanks again, and follow me at on Instagram at philosophical.reminders. I've got some really good content that I load on there daily that I'm sure you can appreciate if you're into this kind of, into, into this kind of philosophical discussion. So thank you guys so much once again. I look forward to doing this for you guys uh, continually. And I'm already working on other episodes on this topic and many others that I'm sure you'll be happy with. Take care, you guys.